Howdy y'all and welcome back to Country Fried Minis. I'm your host Cameron, the country boy in the big city, presenting to you once again from the... The heck is that? This don't look good at all. I better call corporate. Howdy Darlene, is the presenter in? Thank you much. Hi presenter Mueller, I got this guy talking to me about turkey and jade? What do you, what do you mean you're busy? What do you mean promotion? Hello? Hello? Huh. Guess it's my problem now. Suddenly I found myself filling an opening in the command structure and donned the vestments of my office. On screen. Attention, Surratts! I am Star Colonel Tuckalai Malthus of Clan Jade Falcon. A full trinary stands ready to conquer your stream. What forces dare oppose us? This is Demi Presenter Thurston in command of uh, three level two formations. But we can't be booked so early, so. Why don't you check back with us in, say, two weeks? You dare refuse my Bachal? Bachal? I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't know what that is. But hey, you and your turkey people need to keep off of Comstar land. I'll have you know that this is private property. Prepare to feel the wrath of the Falcon's Claws. Oh, Falcons. Yeah, that's a much smaller bird. Sure, we'll muster up and meet you at the front gate. But you and your crew better be ready to pay your bill. Look, there it is again, the turkey thing. I thought these guys were falcons. <sighs> Good one, Thurston. Day one in command and you're already lying to clients. Where are you gonna find 18 chassis around here? Better take a look at what we're up against on screen. What's up, Battletech fans? My name is Tuck Davian of Battlebound, and welcome to this portion of the video. For my half, I'm gonna paint up some classic Jade Falcon Omega Galaxy mechs, and I'm gonna teach you how to make one of the best approximations of the old Waywatcher Green Glaze, so you can do it just like this. I'm going to be using some intermediate level techniques in this video, so feel free to leave a comment if you try them, and tell us what you thought. Normally, I put all relevant materials into the video description, but this ain't my video, so here you go. I like to start off on these with Duplicolor Sandable White Auto Primer. If you have an O'Reilly Auto Parts nearby, that's where I get mine. Just give it a good even coat and make sure you get the undersides of the miniature as well. Jade Falcon Omega Galaxy starts by layering up to an emerald green on the upper torso, so leave the lower half of the miniature blank for now. I used to do these minis with Waywatcher Green before the glaze line from Citadel was discontinued, but if you don't happen to have an old pot of Waywatcher Green laying around, I'm going to include a recipe here for you to get the closest replica to it that I've found on the internet, which is what I'm using here. Shout out to Juan Hidalgo Miniatures for the recipe. Start out by giving the upper torso an even coat of this lighter green, and don't worry that you can still see the primer through the pigment. We're going to build up to the green that I'm looking for instead of trying to get it all on there at once, so at this stage, just focus on getting even coverage. You're going to want to apply two coats, letting it dry for about 25 minutes in between. If you used water for your mixture, it'll probably dry much faster than if you'd used Lamian Medium or even Privateer Press Mixing Medium. I'd recommend the Lamian, but your mileage may vary. This is just second verse same as the first, but you'll notice you're able to see a little less of the primer as the second coat goes on. Once I'm satisfied, I'll move on to Bealtan Green. Once my second coat of the lighter green is dry, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and just tap it on the outer edge of the water cup to shake off the excess, but still leave a good amount of water in the bristles. This will thin the Bealtan when I go to put it on, which is exactly what I want. 
Apply a little at a time over each area of the miniature and go easy on it. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. When I dip my brush in the wash, I usually siphon a good bit of it back into the lid of the jar before I apply it. I just repeat this thinning and application process until I've covered the entire upper torso. Just let gravity work on the miniature and drag the wash down to the places where the shadows would naturally fall and areas naturally be darker. Before I move on, I want to make a note here. If a little dot of green here or there gets somewhere on the bottom half of the miniature, it's not the end of the world. We'll cover that stuff up later, no one will ever know. Okay, let's move on. The lower half of this scheme is like a gunmetal silver, and this is just the easiest way that I've found to get it done without the pain in the behind of having to thin down the paint. I break out my null oil here and apply it at full strength to the bottom half of the miniature. Try to avoid getting any on the green bits, but if you do, don't panic. You can fix that by dipping your brush in the water immediately and applying some water to the mistaken area. That will thin it down to the point of invisibility and you can wick it away with your brush. I like to give this two full strength coats before I move on to the rune fang steel, giving it about 25 to 30 minutes of dry time in between. Try to pay attention to any areas where the liquid seems like it's pooling and use your brush to either wick it away or spread it around, whichever you'd rather. I've found that two coats is the perfect ratio. Any darker than that and it becomes difficult for the dry brushing to overcome that color later. Once the bottom half of the miniature is dry, I'll dry brush it with some rune fang steel. Add a bit of paint to your favorite medium dry brush and wipe the majority of the paint off on a paper towel like I have here. Just use quick, even strokes to coat the entire bottom half of the miniature to whatever point it is that makes you happy. If you want more silver, brush on some more. If you don't, don't. This is an easy step because the amount is really up to you, and there's really no wrong amount per se, just whatever makes you happy. Once you're finished with that, do a little dry brushing on the upper torso of the miniature as well. Go a little lighter with the pressure on the upper torso though, but still give it a good dusting to really give the greens a shiny, metallic look. Now we're almost done. Break out the lead belcher first and pick out the spots on the miniature you'd like to be metallic. For me, it's usually gun barrels, vents, joints, that sort of thing. Picking out these areas before you start painting will give you a much better idea of what you're doing before you start, and it definitely helps you to know when to stop. With metallics, less is more in my opinion. Once you've got those parts picked out and coated, give it some time to dry and come back with your null oil. Hit the metallic areas with this at full strength, but don't glob it on. A little goes a long way with this stuff, but if you put too much, it's not that big of a deal. You can use your brush to wick away the excess and apply it elsewhere. Just season this to taste and give it a bit to dry. I also came back with a small dry brush and added a little bit of the rune fang steel from earlier to the tops of the gun barrels for fun. You can choose to skip that part though, if you want. Now, break out your evil sun scarlet and we're gonna use a stippling technique. Stippling is very similar to dry brushing. You'll wipe most of the paint off on a paper towel before you start to apply it, being sure to test first to gauge the amount of paint coming off the bristles on a pass. Once you're happy, use a poking style motion to stipple the red onto the feet, but don't really go any higher than where the calves would be. This is to replicate stomping in the blood of your enemies. And we're through. You can do the cockpit whatever way you like, but for this I chose a combination of Lawthorn Blue and the Soulstone Blue Technical. The base was done with a combination of Martian Iron Earth, Griffhound Orange, Fugan Orange, and Riza Rust. You can do that however you choose, but one thing I recommend is painting the hex sides with a pair of colors to make it easy to note which facing of the miniature is the front facing. I sure hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial, and I hope you'll check us out on Battlebound and give us a subscription if you haven't already. I'll return you now to your regularly scheduled programming. I'm Tuck Davian, and I'll see you next time right here out on the Space Lanes.
Now it looks like old Malthus has a hell of a force waiting for us. To meet him on the field and equal footing, we're gonna have to bust out all the stops to get this force painted up as quickly as possible. Alrighty folks, today we're gonna get together three level two comm guard units as promised. Blue group and red group will consist of the standard Comstar boxes put out by Catalyst Games, but green group is going to be cobbled together from a few different sets, including two models from the Inner Sphere Direct Fire Lance, three more from the Heavy Lance, and rounded out with the Shadow Hawk from A Game of Armored Combat. Next we'll go over supplies, starting with the most important, some good coffee. We'll be using a white primer with apothecary white contrast paint, your favorite red, yellow, green, and blue to color in weaponry, black for chipping, a dark steel color for metal parts, and finally both gloss and matte varnishes. But you can skip the gloss if you take the optional stopping point mentioned later. Here I've opted to use a light gray primer to start, though white will work just fine here. I instead chose to work with a subtle zenithal prime effect. I'll spray the model from the top down using Liquitex white ink after a thorough coating of the primer has had ample time to cure. A white prime job would work absolutely fine here, but I personally just wanted a little extra shading on the lower surfaces of these chassis. Once we've got our models all primed up, it's time to put that contrast shading down. We're going to take the apothecary white paint and dilute it to a 50-50 consistency with contrast medium and then apply that color all over every square inch of these models. Next up is a solid metallic coating over various details as you see fit. I can't recommend enough the Vallejo metal color line, especially this here jet exhaust. This stuff flows like a dream and has an amazing single coat coverage. Mephiston red. At this point, we're going to get out the Mephiston red and start coloring in the cockpit canopies. Make sure to thin your paint out a bit with water so that it doesn't clog up any details. While we're at it, we'll fill in a few extra details with this color, such as the searchlight on this here guillotine. Furthermore, we'll use the Mephiston Red for all of the medium lasers. My personal coloring convention will be as follows. Warboss Green, War Boss Green will tint every one of our small lasers. Kalidor Sky for every large laser and each and every particle projection cannon. And finally, Phalanx Yellow for all of the short range missile tips. I'm not sure if there's a canonicity to this convention, but I've done my mechs this way ever since playing Mech Warrior 4, and it stays the standard throughout all of my forces. I'm personally strongly of the belief that there's no right or wrong way to do Phalanx this, yellow? just so long as you remember to be happy while you're painting. This next step is going to have us using the decals from Fighting Piranha Graphics. It's not explicitly necessary, but it sure does add a lot to these here comm guards, making them into the Emerald Falconers proper. Water slide decals can be a bit fussy, so it's worth looking around for tutorials on this if you've never used them. For this here video, I'm going to assume you're already familiar with their application and just skip over any tutorial mention. With the decals dried, we're going to do a bit of sponge chipping. Here I've opted for a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Black and Burnt Red so as to make a nice oxidized steel look. We'll dip a bit of torn up sponge into the paint and remove most of the color on a paper towel before lightly and semi-randomly jabbing at the surface of the models. Less is more here, don't overdo it. These models already look great at this point, and this is a lovely stopping point if you just want to get your models rough and ready at a tabletop standard. Otherwise, we're going to jump into some advanced techniques to put these Lambda Com Guards looking real nice. The most involved technique here is going to be a grimy oil wash. To start that up, first we'll need to thoroughly coat the models with a solid coat of gloss varnish. This can be brushed on, but it's best applied through an airbrush. I prefer this Windsor & Newton gloss varnish for my applications. Either way, a nice solid coating of this stuff is going to help the upcoming oil flow really, really well. Now we'll prepare our oil paints by putting out equal parts of a ruddy brown color and a deep black tone. First we need to squeeze some out onto some cardboard to get out a lot of the linseed oil. Of course, this is a great time to go ahead and enjoy a nice hot cup of good coffee. In my humble opinion, it's one of the most important parts of the process. Once that oil is dried out for at least a half hour, we can go ahead and mix up the wash. We're going to need a disposable container like this here shot glass and then something like this pipette to transfer solvent into it. 
Next, we'll put in equal parts brown and black into the cup using an old ratty brush. A medium to large size one is gonna work just fine for what we're doing. Simply just take a good amount of the white spirit or turpentine and mix it into your oil paint until you've got a really thin but heavily pigmented mixture. From here, just brush it haphazardly all over every square inch of your models and make sure to use some gloves and some paper or cardboard to protect your work surface. They might look ruined, but fret not, as the next steps will bring them all back with renewed vigor. Now let it dry. Once we've let these models dry for at least two hours, we're gonna go ahead and remove a good amount of the wash using a few materials. In my case, I'm using an old piece of dress sock and a makeup brush to achieve the effects I'm after. Simply get out another container and put some clean white spirit into it. From here, this is gonna be a two-step process. We'll use the cloth to remove a fair bit of the wash from every surface. It'll leave a bunch of brown staining on the undersides and in the crevices. Next, the makeup brush is used to get a more targeted removal, starting from the head and shoulders and always swiping downward to streak the grime towards the ground in a believable fashion. Finally, we'll attack the heads of the models, removing almost all of the wash from that location. At this point, I recommend letting your models dry overnight before continuing. At least 12 hours and 24 is better. That's because we're gonna seal that work in with matte varnish and then get to basing making it time to introduce today's guest palette. We've got a duo today in honor of the collaboration. It's both Charmander and Pikachu. I have no idea what that thing in the middle is, so I'm just gonna hide it underneath this here puddle of PVA glue. With the glue conveniently held by our guest palette, we're gonna move on to a simple basing scheme that reflects the grassy plains of Tukiad. We'll start by brushing PVA onto the base top liberally, ensuring 100% coverage. Next is gonna be a sprinkle of some fine basin grit and then a super heavy coating of spring or summertime themed fine flocking. Tamping it down with a toothpick is a great way to ensure adhesion. And then we're just gonna rinse and repeat for the whole crew and things are starting to look mighty nice. Following up with a bit more detail, we'll glue down individual specks of coarse basing flock in a darker color for contrast. It also pays to remember scale here and keep these bits really small to help sell the illusions of massive size in your mix. They'll be looking proper in no time. Thanks for your help, Charmander and Pikachu. With the basin tops done, it's finally time to get the rims looking good. I personally always default to Golden Brand black paint for this because it has really good coverage and is super opaque. I'm gonna coat each edge of each base, ensuring complete coverage. From here, we need some kind of marker to denote the front arc of our mechs, so I've opted for a simple design to inform viewers as to what sub-faction these mechs belong to. The base of the design is gonna be three bars blocked in with Mephiston Red to denote Third Army. Over top of that will be a tiny lambda symbol to show the group's internal designation. We'll apply that really carefully with a fine 20 liner brush. Finally, we'll wrap up with yet another coat of the matte varnish. This will both knock back the shine on the base rims as well as add yet another layer of protection against rough handling. And here we are at the end. It's time for a grand reveal. Now weren't these models a ton of fun to get painted up? It really goes to show you that the right application of techniques trumps skill any time. I want to thank y'all for joining me today. And I want to extend a special thanks over to Tuck for indulging my desire to do this collaboration. If y'all aren't already familiar with Battlebound, I highly recommend you head on over there and check them out for their seasonal episodic that talks all things Battletech. And of course, if you're already here on Battlebound, and you want to check out more of the silly stuff we got going on over in the corner, come on over to Country Fried Minis and give us a peek. I want to thank y'all for joining us today. This project's been a lot of fun and a long time coming despite my procrastination, but in the end, it was a total blast to do. And as always, I want you to remember to be happy while you're painting. Take it easy, fellers. See you around next time.